day, everyone. Welcome back to the latest ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Regarding the protests of the new labor law, the president of Indonesia says the protest is only hoax on social media. Indonesian President Joko Widodo defends his flagship job creation law after violent protests erupted opposing the legislation. The state chief says the country needs the sweeping omnibus job creation law to provide employment for its young population and those unemployed due to the economic crisis brought by the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, the president also says that their protest against the new jobs law is hoax from social media. As much as 87% of the total working population has a high school level education and below, where 39% has primary school education. So it is necessary to encourage the creation of new jobs, especially in labor-intensive sectors. So the job creation law aims to provide as many employment opportunities for job seekers and the unemployed. I saw there were protests against the jobs creation law which were motivated by disinformation about the law and hoaxes from social media. If there is still disagreement over this job creation law, please submit a judicial review through the Constitutional Court. Here are just critics to challenge the law at the Constitutional Court if they disagree with its content. Supporters of the law say it aids Indonesia's alien economy by cutting red tape and attracting more foreign direct investment. Protesters say the law undermines labor rights and weakens environmental protections. Japan declined to command on the Chinese Museum on the Diaoyu Island. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chongyin says the Diaoyu Island and its affiliated island are China's inherent territory, and the Japanese side is in no position to make wanton comments. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunobu Kato, talking about the Digital Museum of the Diaoyu Island, says that China was not in the position to create such a website and that Japan had locked a protest through diplomatic channels. Hua says that the move from the Japanese side is illegal and invalid. The Diaoyu Island and its affiliated island are China's inherent territory. This is based on ample historical and legal evidence. China has launched the Digital Museum of the Diaoyu Island based on its sovereign position and the Japanese side is in no position to make wanton comments about it. Japan's attempt to challenge China's territorial sovereignty by the so-called name chains is illegal and invalid. It cannot alter the fact that the Diaoyu Island belongs to China. Who also adds that the Japanese attempt to challenge China's territorial sovereignty, so-called illegal and invalid, it cannot alter the fact that the Diaoyu Island belongs to China. South Korea begins building electric vehicle in Singapore. Now on the cutting edge. South Korea's Hyundai Motor Co. starts construction on a research and development. At a groundbreaking ceremony, Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsiung Lung says the facility may produce up to 30,000 electrical vehicles annually by 2025 and represent an investment of 400 million Singapore dollar or 295 million US dollar. The facility is the first of its kind in the world. It will enable Hyundai to develop new automotive technologies, including for the production of electric cars. It will also allow you to pilot new manufacturing models to meet the demand for mass personalization of cars through small-scale factories in urban areas. Singapore is one of the world's most expensive places to buy a car and does not currently have any auto manufacturing capacity. But the wealthy city-state has set out plans to phase out petrol vehicles by 2040. We are also facing pressure to move people around more efficiently and in an environmentally sustainable manner. Automotive agency activities are becoming viable in Singapore once again. EVs have a different supply chain, fewer mechanical parts and more electronics, which plays to Singapore's strengths. A Hyundai spokeswoman confirms the 30,000 unit target but said that the exact capacity was yet to be determined. The facility is due for completion by end 2022. Singapore plans to phase out petrol and diesel vehicles by 2040 and make a bigger bet on electrification to cut greenhouse gases and slow climate change. Hyundai says in a statement its new Singapore facility aims to be carbon neutral by using solar and hydrogen energy, 
will utilize technologies such as artificial intelligence and robotic and will include a test drive track for customers. The center is part of Hyundai's vision to enable future vehicles buyers to customize and purchase vehicles online using a smartphone, allowing production to be on demand. Cambodia's 11 deaths by severe flooding. Local media reports severe flash floods in western Cambodia causes by heavy rainfall killed at least 11 people. Footage carried by a local broadcaster shows authorities evacuated people to villages in Pursat province. At least 2,400 families evacuated from flood zones and 75,000 hectares of land flooded with several main roads inundated across the provinces. In these floods, military and police are deployed in several areas to assist in evacuations. This flood is damaging many houses and things and also difficult in people's movement. 28 people dead in Vietnam because of heavy rain and floods. State media reports severe flooding causes by heavy rain in Vietnam killed at least 28 people. Heavy ongoing rains since early October have caused deadly floods and landslides in several provinces in central Vietnam and displaced thousands of people in western Cambodia. This image transmits by state broadcast VTV shows that flooded streets and roads destroyed by landslides and villages inundated by flood water. In this natural disaster, 17 construction workers are missing following a landslide at the site of the hydropower dam project in province of Tua Tinh Hue. An additional 13 people sent to rescue the workers are also missing. The National Weather Agency says Nanka Pak with wind speeds of up to 100 km per hour is expected to trigger heavy rain of up to 400 mm in parts of northern and central Vietnam. In central Vietnam, everywhere filled with water caused by heavy rains that started from early October, which killed several people and some people missing out. Authorities evacuated a hundred of thousand people to safe places. Thailand protests demand government to resign and reform constitution. Hundreds of protesters began assembling from 8 a.m. at Bangkok's Democracy Monument on the anniversary of a 1973 uprising that brought down the then military government. Thailand anti-government protests hurriedly bring forward a demonstration in Bangkok. They fear confrontation with royalist groups planning to assemble nearby in support of the king. We must help to make it clear to all people as well as to the monarchy that we are out here fighting with respect. We are out here to call for a reform of the constitution to better the country. Three months of protest demanding a new constitution and the departure of Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha, a former junta leader, have largely been peaceful, although demonstrators scuffled with police and 21 activists were arrested. The government make no immediate comment, but has says people have the right to protest. The police are repeatedly declined to comment on the protest or the demand of the protesters. Among the protesters' demands are for curbs on the constitutional powers of the king and for him to transfer back to the personal control he took of some of army units and palace fortune value in the tens of billions of dollars. China and ASEAN discusses about external interference in South China Sea. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi in the news conference says that Beijing and members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN should work together to remove external interference in the South China Sea. During his visit to Malaysia, he says he and his Malaysian counterpart agree for dispute over the South China Sea should be resolved peacefully through regional dialogue. Wong also describes Washington's Indo-Pacific strategy, which is aimed to cast the United States as a trustworthy partner in the region as a security risk for East Asia. China, which has four years been locked in maritime disputes with other coastal states in the South China Sea, in recent months held military exercises in disputed parts of the strategic waterway, while Washington has accused China of attempting to build a maritime empire in the area. A hundred-year-old Myanmar woman beats coronavirus. In Myanmar, a family includes a 100-year-old woman, spares from the worst of COVID-19 after they were infected, and recovery from the virus. 
More than 1 million people worldwide have died from the coronavirus. Tainkin, a 100-year-old woman, tested positive in early September following infections and the rest of her household, including her great-grandchildren, after her grandson caught the coronavirus from his goldsmith job. Spending two weeks in Yangon Quarantine Center under isolated care and accommodate separately from the rest of her family members. I was told that I was infected with that virus, but I said I felt nothing. I was eating well, showering myself and walking as normal. I have never suffered from other serious disease in my life. I once got fever at age 14. I never heard of virus at the time. Only malaria and dengue fever were common diseases at our young age. But these diseases could be cured with traditional medicine. While well, the family has been granted the green light to go home by doctors after two negative swab tests for the virus, Thang King's granddaughter expresses a more cautious view, fearing reinfections. Even though all of the family got back home safe, we are still so scared of getting infected again. That's why we don't go anywhere outside. Even when we are free to go to the market, we still buy food enough for days. Just to be safe, we locked ourselves down. The data shows that Myanmar records 29,314 positive cases of coronavirus, including 664 deaths. Japan on alert after increase in COVID-19 cases. Media says Japanese authorities and citizens are being vigilant after an uptick in the number of the coronavirus infections in public areas. Authorities also say one recent cluster infection has been traced to a theater troupe in Saitama Prefecture. The group have planned to perform the musical Hime Yuri at the theater on October 20, but the performances cancelled after one member was diagnosed earlier in the month. Japanese media says the cluster result in 64 people being diagnosed. The data shows cluster infections have already hit numerous public places like delivery companies, restaurants and schools. The government says it plans to launch recreation subsidies to boost spending, while no doubt also trying to manage and prevent the pandemic's spread. Based on the data released by authorities, the cumulative number of confirmed infections has exceeded 90,000. During meeting in the Pentagon, United States Republican in South Korea discusses about COVID-19 and security consultative. During meeting in Pentagon, United States Defense Secretary Mark Esper and South Korean Defense Minister Su Wok held their annual defense ministerial talks as a security consultative meeting at the Pentagon, days after Pyongyang's unveiling of previously unseen intercontinental ballistic missiles at the pre-dawn military parade. Amid the environment of persisting security unrest on the Korean Peninsula and in spite of the coronavirus pandemic, defense ministers of South Korea and the United States met in person to exchange our views and develop a bond. This shows a solid and steady South Korea-United States alliance in the face of any security challenges. The appearance of a new intercontinental ballistic missiles during a weekend parade in North Korea captivate many Western analysts, but officials in South Korea are far more concerned by the display of new multiple launch rocket systems and FAST. The two sides had an in-depth discussion on North Korean military activities. They acknowledged the significant threat to North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs posed to international security. Some 28,500 American troops are deployed in South Korea in what is seen as a deterrent to Pyongyang that also sent a message to China about United States influence and capability in Asia. That's all for today. We'll see you soon.